Good morning again, especially to those in video land. Good to have you here on this uh, soon to be 16th Sunday after Pentecost. It is proper 19A uh, for those who are keeping track uh, according to those things. Uh, the, the general theme for this Sunday uh, is uh, the Bible passage that we're not, doesn't even show up in any of this, but I think the Bible passage that helps us to understand what's going on is Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you've been saved through faith. Not your own doing, it is a gift from God. So you're going to hear this uh, God giving of his gifts um, for us. And I want to start with uh, our first reading from Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah 55, 6 through 9, where uh, the Lord speaking through Isaiah says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So a very short Old Testament reading for this Sunday, but a lot is packed in there. Um, and just that first verse, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Now, it, that, it, the way that the English translate this, it seems like we are the ones doing the searching, but really, um, it's think of it this way. When my children were much younger, we used to play hide and seek in, in the house. And I would go hide, and they would seek me. Uh, but as you know, I could hide so that they could never find me. So I would hide in places, especially when they were much younger, that they could hide me. So, you know, if I was hiding behind the curtain, uh, I would make sure I would make noises, and they would go, Aha! Uh -huh, we found Dad! I found you, Dad! You can't hide from us! Well, that's how the Lord does it. Uh, he, he hides, if you want to put it that way, but he makes sure that he can be found, that he can be seen. Um, and so, uh, as Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him. Um, and so that the Lord is always there calling out to us and wanting us to follow him. And then... Kind of saying, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him. So that the Lord can show his compassion on all people. And then verse 8 and 9 is really uh, serves for the rest of the readings uh, in explaining, for God's thoughts are not our thoughts, nor are his ways our ways. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so... Are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts? And there have been many a day where I sat there and I went, I'm, I, I don't understand why, Lord, you're doing this. I'm not, I, don't get, I don't get this. And many times I have to remind myself there's a bigger picture here than the here and now. Now, Isaiah is writing to the children of Israel. Um, and um, for some of them, they're reading it in their, their Babylonian captivity. God allowed the Babylonians to carry them off into captivity and everything that went along with that. So the Babylonian lifestyle, all the worship practices, all the pain and suffering that went along with that. And they're asking the question, why are you allowing to do this? And God says, I have a bigger picture here because I actually want to save the Babylonians. I want to save them from their eternal destruction. And in order for that to happen, I need my people to be there so that they can live the lifestyle that I want them to live so that others are drawn to that. Um, and I think there are times and places in our lives that we might not understand why things are happening the way they are, but God, you know, there's a bigger picture here so that others can be drawn to the faith, so that others can be brought into the family of God. And, um, and so there, I always say there's a bigger picture here than understanding. And we might never see the results of 
our words, our actions to other people um, because they might go on and, and live their life, but that might have a very profound effect on them uh, as well. So uh, I always say, you know, it's hard. I understand it's hard not to complain when things are happening, but to say, wait a minute, there must be a bigger picture here than the here and now. That God has a, there's a bigger picture going on with what's going on. Uh, so that's kind of what, um, you know, that's what it is. And that's why God says in the beginning, seek the Lord that he may be found. Trust in him, rely on him. You're not gonna understand everything, but we, God has a bigger picture here, a bigger plan. And that, that uh, we, we see that as well. So questions, comments? There are no questions or comments at this time. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There is a hand raise in the back there. It just seems that we need to live through it in order to understand it. God told his people, but they had to get out into the wilderness before they understood it. And, yes. And so it is for us today. If you tell it to me, I really don't get it. But if I have to live through it and figure it out, I think then I might get it better. Well, we hope. She, she, I don't know if you heard that comment about, uh, but Arlene Crickenberg said that sometimes we have to go through whatever God wants us to go through, and and we might not understand at the time, but eventually, hopefully, we will get it. And seeing, I like to say, seeing the bigger picture. Um, so uh, that that's I think that's so true for all of us as we go through what we go through in life. Well, at the time it doesn't, and that might not make sense on this side of heaven, why things happen the way they do. So uh, that's what's going on. Uh, turn to the gospel reading, so the bottom of the page, Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. Um, and so once again, this is another parable of Jesus, uh, and he's explaining what the kingdom of heaven uh, is like. What, is, what does it mean to be in the family of God? So Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, and that was typical, you got a denarius a day. That was a very typical fair wage. So they agreed to that. Uh, they went in the And then going about a third hour, he saw others standing idle in the market and said to them, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those who were hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am only I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I chose uh, what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first will be last. And so this, this story that Jesus tells, you know, the, the guys early in the morning, at six o'clock in the morning, they agreed to a day's wage, they went out and worked all day, and then we had the, the uh, owner of the vineyard throughout the day hiring, he needs more workers, so he's hiding until he gets to the last of the day, five o'clock, he finds these last workers and says, go in the vineyard and I'll pay you whatever. And so, they all got the same amount. To which we would say what? What would be a not fair? Unfair. Why well, should I worked all day? I should get more than he. But what did the 
owner of the vineyard agreed to the people who he signed the de denarius, and they agreed to that. That was the agreement. And the owner of the vineyard said, I can do with whatever I want with my money. We agreed to denarius. And so Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is like this, meaning there will be some who will be in the kingdom of heaven, will be in the church in for the long haul. And then there will be those who will come at the last hour, who will sneak by, who will get in, into which Jesus is saying the most important thing is this, is that they all receive the kingdom of heaven. They all receive the blessing of God. Don't be so concerned about how, many, how much time you put in. Be happy that they were blessed by God. And so we do that. And that's that, that we sit there and go, but God, you're, you're letting them slide in. That's not fair. Woo, woo, woo. So, and, and Jesus is saying in here, because in the context of uh, Jesus is talking about, is that the disciples and those around here are going, look at that, we're all we're doing because we can get into the kingdom of God. And Jesus is saying, but you don't understand the bigger picture here. It's all gift. It's all gift that I give to you. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. It's a pure gift that we receive that. And so um, that's what Jesus is going here. Now, what I find, uh, and, and, I, and I think this helps us to do this, at the beginning of the story, uh, it says that the master of the house went out early in the morning to hire people. So he went out looking for people to be brought into the vineyard to work. And as the day goes on, he finds more people. He's finding more people. He's finding more people. And he brings them in and then he gives to them whatever the salary that he gives to them. And they're, it's all the same. It's all the same. I always, and I always chuckle to myself when people say uh, to me, oh, grandma's gonna have a better seat in heaven than I will. And I'm going, I think they're all good seats in heaven. So, I mean, it's not like going to a baseball diamond back in the old days and you gotta sit behind the post <laughs> and watch the game. I don't think that's, I think that we all have good seats and we're all there and that we should rejoice in that everybody's given this gift. Everybody's given this gift. So uh, that's what's, what's going on with that. So, um, so I think that not, you know, I think some people struggle with that. They just say, what, that's not fair. But Jesus says, well, guess what? Life isn't fair and, and God isn't fair. Thank the Lord, because if he was fair, We would have nothing. But in his grace, his mercy, and his love for us, he gives us these wonderful gifts that he gives to us. So uh, that's what's going on. So we have God's thoughts are greater than my thoughts. His ways are greater than my ways. Seeing the big picture here, Jesus, we heard this, this story. The bigger picture is, is that the kingdom of heaven is for everyone. No matter what time you get, you come into the kingdom. You're part of the kingdom. You're part of the, you know, what's, you know, the great blessings of, of what God gives. So, you know, that's what's going on with that. You guys are not very talkative today. I know one person's not here today that asks all the questions, but <clears throat> Arlene. I don't understand this. It just seems to me that the ones, I'll, I'll use our church, for example. The ones who have known Jesus all their lives, they have that comfort whenever a sad thing happens of knowing Jesus and knowing God's love. To me, they seem more blessed than the ones who go through life without that. And then at the last minute, thankfully, they accept Jesus as their Savior. Or, you know, yeah. I, I don't understand this. Yeah, it, it, this, is a, this, is a, this is a difficult uh parable that Jesus gives. Um, the, I think the only one that is more difficult is the, the parable of the unjust 
or the wicked servant. Back, everyone. Uh, had a little difficulty with the uh, video, but uh, I'll just finish it up here, and you're just going to hear my voice as we go through uh, the rest of the readings. Uh, for the last almost four months, we'll be reading through the book of Romans, and now beginning this Sunday, we're going to spend four weeks in the book of Philippians. Uh, Paul wrote Philippians while he was in prison, and you're going to see how that it played itself out. He saw it as a blessing, um, and that uh, that the gospel was going to be promoted uh, with people probably wouldn't necessarily share the gospel with in the in the uh, first place, but here uh, Paul got to share with them. So I'm just going to read through and make comments along the way. Paul wrote, I want to you to know, brothers, that uh, what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. Uh, and most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Uh, Paul was arrested for being a Christian, uh, and that was the sole reason. Uh, and he was going to be making his way to Rome um, to defend uh, his Christian faith. Uh, but along the way, Paul always saw an opportunity to share the gospel, the good news. He shared Jesus with others, uh, so much so that the imperial guard heard about um, this, uh, you know, Paul being imprisoned for Christ, and that they were hearing it, and uh, they were coming to the faith. Uh, and that also gave him encouragement to those who uh, share the faith outside of those jail walls, prison walls, so that the advancement of the gospel can go on. Paul continues on, verse 19, For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, uh, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means faithful labor for me, yet which I shall choose I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all for your progress and joy in the faith so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. So here we see that, that Paul is struggling with uh, wanting to go home to heaven to be with Jesus and then also staying uh, here and helping thing, uh, the, the furtherment of the gospel. Uh, but for Paul, it didn't really matter because, you know, whatever it is, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, and so I think that's a, a, a wonderful example for us as well. Uh, I think there are days when we go, okay, Jesus, come and get me. But there are other days that the Lord has asked me to stay, asked you to stay. And whatever, uh, we're going we're gonna to live for Christ. And if I die, I, I get to be with Jesus. Um, so, uh, so whatever that case may be, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the bigger picture, what's going on, God always has a bigger picture than we do. We might not understand why things happen the way they do while we're put in certain positions or events or situations. Um, but God places there so that we can share the good news of God's salvation, that we can tell others uh, that Jesus loves them. Uh, and so that's, that's what Paul's going uh, kind of talking about here, uh, that uh, not only... Even though he is hard pressed, you know he, you know he says, "Whatever the Lord wants, that's what I'm going to do." Verse 27: Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, and with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, not frightened by in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction but of your salvation, that from God. It, for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Engage in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Uh, Paul talks about living this manner uh, uh, worthy of the gospel. and he, he uses this phrase, worthy, in other places. Sometimes One is in... Uh, 
uh, Ephesians, I think again in Colossians, this this living in a manner worthy. Uh, the, the, the Greek word is axios, that we live in balance. It's a scale uh, that uh, the, the, the life that we live uh, should, you know, that others should see it, as Paul says, so that I come and see, or in absent I hear of us standing firm in the faith, striving to, you know, to promote the gospel, that this will happen. So, uh, as we go through the book of Philippians, uh, Paul, as I like to say, is painting the bigger picture here as to what's going on. Yes, he's in prison. People might say, well, why is that? Um, but I do know that Paul being in prison, um, one of the blessings that came from that is that he wrote a lot of his letters. If Paul wasn't in prison, he probably wouldn't have written the letters. Probably wouldn't have written the book of Romans. Well, we know he wouldn't have ever, probably wouldn't book Philippians. Uh, he writes Ephesians and Colossians. That he's writing these while he is in prison. Almost God saying, okay, Paul, I need you to take time out from your busy missionary work to literally sit down and write these things that I want you to write. And, and I think the book of Romans is a very important book. I, I just have a feeling if Paul wasn't in prison and having time to write it, he wouldn't have done that. I mean, it's very a lot of doctrinal stuff about uh, God's understanding of the law, helping us understand that, the gospel, grace, and uh, um, those things that go along with that. So sometimes we just have to be thankful that God, you know, where he places us, it might not always make sense, but in the bigger picture of things, that will work out for us as well. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, intro it is from Psalm 116, uh, where, uh, the psalm writers, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, uh, and call on the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits to me? Uh, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. Um, you know, this offer, the sacrifice of thanksgiving, is this is already, I have received a gift. God has already given me his gift, and, and it is the gift of salvation, uh, that we have this cup of salvation that God gives to us, the benefits that he gives. Forgiveness, life, salvation, grace, mercy, love. All this has been given to me, and and, and uh, my response is to offer that thanksgiving, that praise, to call on the name of the Lord, knowing that no matter what, he will continue to uh, share that gift with us. And continue to do that as, you know, I will offer up that sacrifice of praise. And then the colic of the day, I, I love this colic, Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us to trust in your abiding grace. I think this is so important and live according to your word, that we trust in his grace, that gift, again, that God has given to us. Uh, that uh, we have that, uh, like I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the of the uh, study, you know the 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 verse, the theme verse uh, for today is from Ephesians chapter two. By grace you have been saved through faith. It is not your own doing; it is the gift of God. Um, that we have this, that this wonderful grace, and seeing that this is much bigger than we are, that God's grace is always there. Um, so I hope you learned anything from that as we look forward to Sunday morning uh, uh, this weekend and what God has to say to us, that we realize that God has his gift for us. We might not under understand why we're doing it, but helping us to see the bigger picture uh, that God does love us. Uh, so with that, I leave you the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.